Hey, welcome back to episode 10. Yes, I uh, can't believe it's already episode 10 of the Ultimate Iron Man Progression series. I'm UAM Colossi, and this is phase one of the series where I focus primarily on the quest log. Uh, here I am at the Sand Crabs, just uh, AFK training while I edit and eat. Uh, just kind of beefing up. Um, last video, we, uh, well, it was kind of sporadic, wasn't it? Uh, we set out with the goal originally to obtain the Void Knight armor, uh, but that was just too much to tackle for what we had to do. Um, I'm going to try to refrain from, um, I don't know, projecting <laughs> kind of unobtainable goals uh, as best I can. <laughs> so in this one, I think... It's safe to say that we'll just be getting some upgrades here. Uh, one being our uh, helmet. We want to get the Nate is Not Helmet. Uh, second being our scimitar. We'll upgrade that from Rune to Dragon. And third being our offhand. We'll upgrade our shield slot to a Dragon Defender. Uh, because once we get um, our attack and our strength to 65 each, uh, that'll add up to 130 giving us access to the Warrior's Guild, uh, which means access to our defenders, and also to our best-in-slot food area as well. Cheesy potatoes uh, are uh, purchasable from a shop in the Warrior's Guild for a very cheap price, and they heal 16 each, so that's going to be used throughout the entirety of this account. Hero's Quest done. One quest point, access to the Hero's Guild. A total of 29,232 experience spread over 12 skills. 169 quest points total. Uh, let's see if we get any levels from this. 37 range. 31 herb lore. 40 smithing. And that's it. Um, I'm going to be a good ultimate Iron Man here. And since we had to get the ice gloves for this quest. And they're kind of out of the way and a pain in the ass to get. Uh, we're going to take full advantage of them while, while we have them in our inventory. Um, so we use them during the hero's quest to obviously get the uh, phoenix uh, killed. To grab its feather over on Entrenum. Um, and then there's also a couple of quests that we're going to knock out while we have them. One being the Clock Tower and uh, the second being Giant's Foundry. Giant's Foundry done. 6,000 smithing experience. Uh, up to 41 smithing now. Hell yeah. On to the next one being Clock Tower. Alright, Clock Tower done for a shit reward. Little to no quest points. Um, and that's all we're going to be using our ice gloves for, so we can drop those for now. We will, we will have to get them back in the future probably several times for different quests and whenever I want to do smithing. But for now, there's their home. Are we about to do underground pass for 3,000 attack experience? <laughs> <laughs> Fucking right we are. Uh, it's going to be... We're, it's going to be okay, I think. We have a pretty good agility level, uh, 58. Uh, the, this quest is highly dependent on your agility level. Uh, the failure of the obstacles is dependent on it, I should say. Um, we have everything we need for the quest. We have a good amount of food on us, um, some combat equipment, um, and with everything on us, we weigh zero, so uh, we'll only get lighter as it goes on. Not, I don't think weight even matters past zero anyways, like the negative weight means not shit. Oh, I don't know why I'm going past the castle. I, I didn't think that you started the quest here, but yeah, uh, this is what we're doing. One step closer to the Elven Lands, I guess. Whew, so I made a big mistake. I dropped my bow um, and my arrows and everything here, thinking that like when I failed the rope thing, I wouldn't be set back to the very beginning, but I was. Uh, and I managed to make it back to pick up the 
the arrows in the tinderbox that I left here. Uh, but, but I had dropped my bow on the other side of this bridge, and luckily I thought of telegraphing it, and it actually worked. Like, this this bridge wasn't blocking me or anything. I was able to tell, tell block my bow back. Uh, we now have all of our bronze fire arrows made that will keep on us. <laughs> uh, hopefully we don't fail the rope one more time. <laughs> so, uh, this is my path. Uh, just straight forward all the way to the right. And uh, if, as you'll notice, my food is a little low now because I literally tried every other path except for this one. So, we took... Uh, 30, 60 damage uh, by falling in those pits, but this is the easiest path I've ever had in this, <laughs> so <laughs> kind of cool. All right, we got a good pace going with this quest so far. Uh, we've been using our prayer to keep our hit points, our hit point re regen up. Um, we got our first resupply of the paladins by talking to them before we killed them. I uh, got some food, got a prayer potion. Um, and we're about to go down to where the dwarves are, where we should get our second resupply, so. Food, I don't think, should be an issue for this quest. We won't have to teleport out to resupply, which is pretty good. So I made a crucial error during the quest. I dropped my tenor box after I lit the uh, the arrows on fire, thinking I wouldn't need it for the rest of the quest. But uh, I needed it to light some coffin on fire um, within the underground pass. So rip my time. Uh, we're just going to grab some cakes. Uh, actually, I need to grab a couple ropes and uh, head back through the entirety of the underground pass. All right, there's underground pass done. Five quest points, it's a beefy amount, 3,000 agility and attack experience. And we got our uh, Ivan staff, which is pretty cool. I think I'm probably gonna upgrade that actually. It costs um, 200,000 to make it the uh, the U, like Ivan staff U. I'm not sure what the U stands for, but upgraded, I guess. I don't know why they're not just universal with that stuff. Like, just make it I, and I don't know, or E. Uh, they use all kinds of letters. Um, so that's done. We will, um, I guess, we'll sell these Chaos Runes. I'm not really going to need them since I have Death Runes, and that's what the uh, Ivan Staff uses. So we'll say goodbye to the... Uh, well, first of all, we'll see if we get any levels from this. Um, no levels. Cool. Um, so what we'll do is we will retire the fire battle staff. Um, we'll see if we can actually store that in the, I know I know it's a uh, hard clue stash uh, that I can, I can actually make hard clue stash units now. So if I can get the rune full helm and whatever else is needed, I forget what the other item is, but um, fairly easily, if we can get that, um, we'll go ahead and store it in the stash unit. If not, we'll out it. Um, but that's gonna get retired and replaced by the Ivan staff in the inventory. Uh, I will sell the chaos runes for cash, and I'll sell whatever um, whatever nature runes I need to sell to get up to. I want to get 300k extra because uh, I if I'll, I'll also need to buy the um, dragon scimitar later on. So so we'll sell enough runes to get 300k, upgrade the staff, uh, and then have enough to buy the dragon scimitar. Um, I'll take a look to see if there's any more quests I can do for my uh, for my attack level. If there aren't, then I will just go train until I have 60 attack. Okay, I'm on my way back to enchant the, uh, or sorry, upgrade the Ivan staff, and I uh, I got a prison random event and just happened to get Toad Flax, which is actually really nice because um, if you don't know, Toad Flax is the base ingredient needed for agility potions, and uh, I'm really not far off from being able to make agility potions. Uh, 34, I'm currently 31, and there's a lot of stuff that I can do to get herblore experience, like just free herblore experience. Um, and the secondary is Toad Legs, which is easily collectible at the Gnome Stronghold. So, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to stop relying on RNG for uh, Dr. Jekyll to show up and give me a four-dose um, uh, agility potion for this Irrit. Uh, so, uh, I'm going to go get that herbal level. I'm going to use these to make the potions myself, and then we'll be able to do Taibawani Trio. I'll keep the Irrit on me until I have the means to make it myself just in case but yeah that's actually really lucky and here we are at this dark mage um so i found out that the third item for this hard stash unit that the fire battle staff is stored in are uh, blue dragon hide chaps which i'm not even anywhere close um, to being able to make with the crafting skill uh, if we go ahead and check armor and crafting it takes level 68 to make those so 
Not even close, not even close to boosting for it. Uh, so it's just gonna be an Alk. Uh, so my first high level alchemy actually, so that's pretty big. So Fire Battle Staff, you've been great. We salute you, but you're no longer needed. Beefs up the cash check a little bit. Uh, as you can see, we sold our we sold the the majority of our nature runes. Well, all of our all of our um, chaos runes sold for forty five each at the Morsain shop, and then the bulk of our nature runes sold for ninety each at that shop, giving us uh, taking us from seventy four k up to uh, around four hundred and twelve k. So pretty nice. Uh, upgrading this staff is going to take two hundred k, so that'll be about half our cash deck. Uh, so we're going to want to upgrade my Ibn staff, please. So he says, yes, I can upgrade it to hold 25,000 charges. Or sorry, 2,500 charges. I'd have to cast Ibn's magic 2,500 times. Yep. Um, 1,500 times on people. That's weird. Why would you use that in PvE or PvP? And it'll cost 200,000 coins, just like I thought. Here's 200k. Please upgrade my staff. Nice. Okay. Um, that should be an achievement as well. Yep, it's a medium Ardoin task. Nice. Uh, what that allows us to do is just have a really, really nice upgrade to our magic. Um, before, what we were doing, uh, we were casting, uh, what was it? Firebolt with our Fire Battle Staff. Uh, that was our go-to. Its max hit was a 15. Uh, or no, it, its max hit was a 12, actually. 15 was the max hit of like the, if I was using death runes and using earth blast or something, but yeah, max hit of 12 for the previous spell that we were, we were relying on. Uh, now Ivan's blast has a max hit of 25. So that's really, really, really big. Um, huge improvement. Um, I will have to carry fire runes on me. I just realized that. Um, so it doesn't really save us any inventory space because um, if you remember, we, well, we had one more rune here. We had Chaos Runes, which we sold. So we'll have to replace that with Fire Runes just so we have um, something to cast uh, Ibn's Blast with. So, cool. I think what I'm going to do next is uh, train my Herbler a bit. I'll probably do that through the uh, through the Achievement Diary by training, um, or by using the Experience Lamps, the Rewarded Experience Lamps from the Easy Diaries. So I'll just do uh, a bunch of those. The Candoran, I think I'm only one off. And that'll give me a really nice light source, but yeah, uh, we have plenty of cash left. Uh, we have 222k. We need 100k for our Dragon Scimitar whenever we get 60 attacks, so plenty of funds left for that. And there's Edgar's Ruse done. One quest point, beefy 11,000 Herbler experience, and the Trollheim Teleport spell once I hit 61 magic. 177 quest points total. Uh, this takes us up to 36 Herblor, well above what we needed. Um, if you remember, our goal was 34 in order to make agility potions with this Toad Flax, allowing us to do Taibo Wani Trio for some more attack experience. So we'll move on to that. Hey, Taibo Wani Trio done. Uh, two quest points, 5,000 fishing and cooking experience, 2,500 attack and strength experience, 179 quest points total. And that should give us, if my calculations are correct, uh, I guess they weren't. It didn't give us an attack level. Okay, yeah, so I had to talk to this dude here uh, to get my combat experience, and this will bring us to 59 attack. Hell yeah. And then I'll talk to the other two brothers as well. Um, he gave me a rune spear KP. I'm not going to need that. You can actually buy rune spears now on Mount Kralum. Uh, near Konar Slayer Master, so uh, this will just be a nice Alk. Uh, let's see, 12,400, so yeah, we'll go ahead and knock that. Yes, please. Uh, let's get a reward from Tinze. 5,000 cooking experience. And we'll head to the last brother over here. Uh, who is this? I'm not even going to try to say that. Talk to... And we get 5,000 fishing experience. Cool, cool. Um, if you're wondering where I got this hard clue scroll, I literally got it on the one extra Karambon that I fished, just in case I burnt the first one that was given to me by 
uh, one of the brothers. Uh, so it is a um, Ceredomen Wizard step. So, and it's in the shipyard, pretty easy location. Um, kind of weird, I got it like right next to the fairy ring that it's suggesting I go to do this step. Um, but yeah, I'll, I'll probably be able to do this one since I have Protect from Magic now. I'll wait till I have my Dragon Scimitar. And we'll obviously protect from magic, have as much melee defense as we can with an anti-poison. And we it should improve our odds. We shouldn't get wrecked like last time. Okay, if you take a look here at our attack experience, we're getting very, very close to level 60, which is what we need for our dragon scimitar. Oh yeah, there it is. Level 60 attack. We can now wield dragon weaponry. Uh, and if you take a look at my inventory, look at what we got. We went and got our dragon scimitar. So... Uh, that's pretty great. Um, that's gonna, that's a huge upgrade, like, altogether. Look at that. Plus 22 melee strength and a, uh, plus 22 slash accuracy bonus over the rune. So, uh, we'll go ahead and equip that now. And, uh, we'll swap our attack style to, uh, let me think. I'm gonna be doing a bunch of quests for strength, uh, uh, pretty soon here. That, that's actually kind of next on the agenda. I'll swap it to strength anyways, just because that's kind of what I want to focus on up until I get 65. All right, wrapping up our AFK session, AFK strength training session. Uh, as you can see, we got up to level 60 to match our strength. And uh, still have this rune scimitar in our inventory, so we'll go ahead and uh, salute that. You served us well. Take care, buddy. Kind of a shame we couldn't get a uh, ornament kit from Beginner Clues to uh, store that in the house to commemorate it, but it is what it is. Gone now. New best friend here. Um, so right now, the plan, uh, I'm going to prioritize getting this uh, hard clue out of my inventory. So uh, we'll go and try to kill the Serdaman Wizard. Hopefully it goes better than last time. And... Um, Hopefully we can complete it. That'd be cool to have our first heart clue done in the account. Oh shit, I didn't even realize uh, with that 60 strength we actually got to uh, level 70 combat exactly. Nice. Uh, that is actually pretty huge for us because that... Uh, let me check the Slayer Guide real quick, but I'm pretty sure that unlocks um, Chandler Bing, right? Let's see. Chaldar, however you say that fucking Slayer Master's name. Let's see. Yeah, yeah, the Xanaris Master, which should think his name's Chaldar or something with 70 combat that's really good because that means when we go for our rune pouch eventually we can actually get decent points uh, instead of like trash points from Edgeville cool cool really good Yeah, I looked into it. You need 50 smithing, or at least I'll need 50, 50 smithing, 40 farming, uh, 47 prayer, and 42 slayer in order to access Mosley Harmless. So kind of a ways out, um, uh, just general account skill-wise. Uh, so it's probably just worth it to drop it and hope for a new one at this point, especially since I will be going back to AFK woodcutting and mining um for potential uh, clue geodes and clue nests. So yeah, uh, not worth holding on to. Kind of sucks, very unfortunate, but uh, look at this though. Uh, the King's Messenger came to give me a note. I uh, forget what quest this starts. Uh, let's see. Must discuss her next commission. Uh, I know it. Ha I completed Underground Pass, so it probably goes further into the elf quest line. 
Uh, let me see if it started anything. Oh, yeah, yeah. It started regicide. Okay, cool. I don't know if that's even worth doing right now. But it's not really priority. I'll just kind of leave it as is. All right, so I made it here into the cave. Obviously doing uh, Fermentic Isles. Uh, we're all geared up. A uh, little pro tip. This is the first time I've actually ever done this. Um, since I have Ivan's Blast, I might as well take advantage of it, but I can just kind of sit here and chill and kill these uh, Ice Trolls from afar. You have to kill 10 of them in order to gain access to the boss. And instead of just being head-to-head -head combat, taking damage the whole time, I'm just sitting back chilling outside their aggro range and only attacking them when they're aggroed on somebody else. So I'm just kind of cheating in a way. Uh, so I'll finish up my kills here. I'll resupply because I think uh, they offer like prayer potions and like uh, probably like super set, something like that. And we'll uh, kill that troll boss. Okay, cool. Um, we got a resupply, two full prayer potions, really nice. Uh, we'll go, go across the bridge here. We have plenty of food. We'll heal up right as we enter because we got hit on our way. So heal up, throw our quick prayers on. We want to be protected from magic for this guy. We also have our uh, steel skin on. And we'll just flick uh, incredible reflexes to get him down faster. And this should be it. He might throw me back, I'm not sure. But if I got to eat... I'll just walk under him, just like I did with Elvarg. Kind of weird he's not giving me experience drops, kind of trippy, but... I don't know why they decide to give, like, no experience or partial experience for some... guys. <laughs> I don't know, I guess their thought processes, their experience comes with a reward. I don't know. Uh, we'll go ahead and... we'll just camp that, actually. We'll camp all these, fuck it. Because, I mean, what else are we going to do with these prayer potions, right? <laughs> I'm probably going to end up dropping him. He's pretty close to dead here. Not a bad fight. Pretty easy helmet upgrade here. Honestly, that trick with the Ivan Staff was kind of game changing. Really saves a lot of supplies. Um, I'll just heal up just cause. Or dropped. Okay, he's dead. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. One dead troll. Uh, we'll go turn this in, complete the quest. He's offering us a 10,000 experience reward um, in any melee based combat stat of our choice. I think I'm going to choose hit points just because it'll get me a guaranteed extra hit point. And these are just easy enough to train at crabs. It's what I'm AFKing at the moment, so no big deal getting an extra 10,000 experience there. So hit points. Cool. Oh, we get to choose again. Okay. Um, I'll put this one in defense. Why not? Because it is low. I think that was a good choice. I probably should have put both into defense, to be honest, because I don't you need, like, 55 defense to wear this helmet? I don't know. I could be wrong. I'll try to put it on right now after this is completed. Uh, yep, they have a lot to say. Okay. Uh, yep. Cool. Uh, 10,000 wood cutting experience, one quest point, 5,000 crafting experience. That's, that's actually the reason we wanted to do this. That is the last quest that we have for crafting experience. We also got 5,000 construction experience. Uh, the helmet is not. Uh, two lots of 10,000 experience, as you saw. We're up to 180 quest points. Hell yeah. Uh, any levels? Yeah, we saw that. The 57, 51, 73 woodcutting. Cool. Uh, two more till we can cut magics. Um, and then let's see if we can wear this helmet. 55 defense. So, um, yeah, we'll probably just go... I'll look up what quests give defense experience. Uh, if there aren't any, then I will just go crab until I'm 55 just so I can put that on um, for the next adventures that we have uh, otherwise I'm going to prioritize um, I'm going to prioritize doing any quest that gives strength experience um, crazy we're actually we're only 2,000 away from our crafting goal 
of 53 to make the full snake skin. That's not too bad. I'll, uh, I'm pretty sure we don't have any more quests that we can do, though. Uh, not with the stats that we have now. So, uh, I'll stop rambling. We'll get on to something else. Olaf's quest done for the 12,000 defense experience. 20,000 coins. Pretty decent reward. I got pretty lucky on the uh, rickety bridge that you have to build for the quest. I only fell one time. So, nice RNG there. We'll move on to the next one. All right, here we go. We've just been AFK and sand crabs again. Pretty common theme, uh, but we're pretty close to getting 55 defense, which is what we need to wear our Helm of Nate is not. Uh, just a, less than 100 to go. A few more hits, a few more good hits. And three, two, one. 55 defense. Throw this bad boy on. Oh man, look at us. We're ready for war. Well, not quite. We still got this god awful shield. We gotta get ourselves a little dagger in that hand. But yeah, um, next is just gonna be. I think maybe I'll do some um, some farming quests. I know that's kind of weird, but um, we're less than 2,000 crafting experience away from our crafting goal to make full snakeskin uh, minus the shield. And I kind of just want to. There's one quest that we could potentially do um, for exactly 2,000 experience, but we need our farming up in order to, to do it. And that is, um, what is that called? It's the Hot Air Balloon quest, uh, Enlightened Journey. So, uh, and for Enlightened Journey, we need a better farming level. We need, uh, we need level 30 um, to be able to plant willow trees. So I think that's gonna be our goal. We're, there's a few uh, quests that we can do that we have the requirements for. Um, for farming that give like 5,000 experience each so we can get a decent amount of experience in that skill and then do that last crafting quest and finally meet our snakeskin goal. Creature Frankenstein done. This was a requirement for uh, Garden of Tranquility which we're gonna do next. 44 thieving. Yep. There's Garden of Tranquility done. Let's see what this gives us. Exactly 30 farming. That's what we're looking for uh, in order to do Enlightened Journey. So we can now plant willow trees, which is nice. We'll be able to plant those anytime we get those from woodcutting in the future. And uh, yeah, let's go do um, uh, this kind of, it's a kind of semi pain in the ass quest for Ultimate Iron Man, Enlightened Journey, just because you have to go to Entrena. And I think you have to go there multiple times and spend a good deal of time there. So there's, def there's definitely going to be at least one, maybe two suicides for this one quest. So uh, it'll be nice to get out of the way, though. So let's get into it. So we went to Entrena. We gave him his whole list of all the items. It was like 27 items, uh, which is why my inventory looks like this. He gave us a sapling for a, um, a willow tree, because for the next part of the quest, we need 12 willow branches, which we have to prune off of willow trees. Uh, so we'll go ahead and clear this patch in Falador. I just ran back up from Port Serum since I don't have my teleport runes on me. Um, pretty convenient because my stuff is death piled over there in the Falador Castle. Uh, so we'll go ahead and plant the sapling that Augustine gave us and pretty much just um, put this quest on pause because one, we're going to have to wait for this tree to grow. And two, we're going to have to wait for branches to grow off of it to prune. Uh, we're probably going to have to prune it a few different times. So this is going to be on hold for quite a while. And luckily he gave us a basket of apples uh, to protect the tree. Uh, so that it guarantees that it does not die. So that'll be here in Falador uh, growing up. And in the meantime, I'm probably just going to do a mixture of different quests and... Uh, training my combat stats up, my attack and strength to uh, 65 so that we can get into the Warrior's Guild. There's Forgettable Tale of a Drunken Dwarf completed for 5,000 farming and cooking experience. And we've got 187 quest points now. Uh, 34 farming from that. Oh, that, that lets us do uh, Tide Farm. Cool. That's awesome. Um, that just means we can go get farming experience anytime we want without having to rely on... Uh, time gated patches or anything like that we can work on getting our seed box and our herb patch whenever we need it or at least the points for it because i don't think i want to dedicate inventory slots to them yet at least not until i'm uh i've dedicated myself to slayer so um yeah uh 
pretty big milestone though. We've completed 100 out of 154 quests, effectively putting us uh, about two thirds of the way uh, to our goal of completing all the quests. And there's Haunted Mind done. Two quest points, 22,000 strength experience, and access to Tarn's Lair. Cool. Uh, we ran out of food. We used one dose of prayer potion, so a little bit close. Uh, 61 strength from that, pretty good. On to the next one. Troll Romance done. No levels. Scorpion Catcher done for one quest point. 6,625 strength experience. Um, what this means is we have run out of quests to train our combat stats with. At least that we have the requirements for. So, the rest of the levels that we get in our attack and strength. Uh, we need five more attack and four more strength levels. We'll be done at the Sand Crabs. Uh, just doing some AFK. Um, and then we can start our defender grind. So, I'll get to it. Here we go. 65 attack. Uh, that is 130 cumulative levels for attack and strength, which means we can go into the Warriors Guild and start getting our defenders. So uh, we can stop doing this whole sand crab thing and teleport on out of here and head over there. All right, so we're going to kind of get ourselves geared for the Warriors Guild. Um, the first thing I'm going to do is obviously store my graceful, uh, grab our proselyte out uh, for our max defensive beefiness. And um, we're going to need to get our hands on a full set of mithril, the uh, helmet, the body, and the legs, so that we can kill the animated armor to get our tokens to then kill the cyclops to get our defenders. So we'll store our graceful right now. We will grab our armor out of our case here. Scroll down a bit. Here we go. Store the helmet because we got a better one on right now. Uh, this is the gear we're going to be killing them in. I know. Try not to swoon. Uh, we'll head to, let me think, Louis Legs, I think, in Alcarid. Fastest way to get there is with my dueling ring. Uh, and then we'll head to Horvick's shop in Varrock. Don't ask me why I know these guys' names. I'm a fucking nerd. Um, and then for the helmet, we'll have to go to, what is his name? Pexa or something, Pesca, in uh, the Barbarian Village. And we will have our full set of Mithril and be good to go. See you at the Warriors Guild. Here's an easy clue for you. Ooh, nice. That's actually really cool. That's actually uh, just overall a really nice clue scroll. Um, the Amulet of Magic T and the War Blessing. So <clears throat> I didn't have anything in the Blessing slot yet. Um, so that's cool, and it's completely storable. Both of these are in the house. Uh, so anytime I go to train my magic, I can just kind of whip this out, throw it on. Good to go. That, that looks really sweet too. So that's a. Uh, let's just see what the stats are for that on its own. Uh, plus ten mat. Plus ten magic uh, accuracy bonus. Uh, over the amulet of power, which is a plus six. So. Hell yeah, I will take it. And then this is just going to be a permanent plus one to prayer. Uh, all right, we made it to the warriors guild, and here we are in uh, Lido shop. I think that's the name. Lidio. Uh, this is going to be our primary source of food for a long time, uh, at least until we unlock minnows uh, for Noted Shark. But yeah, these cheesy potatoes are going to be our lifeblood. Um, they heal 16 each, and he stocks 10 per world, so pretty nice. Also, I, I snagged some potions from uh, Lily over here. She sells them at a decent price, um, so we actually have something to boost our combat stats now. Uh, we'll get to work over here uh, next door, where this guy's killing that reanimated rune armor. Uh, we'll snag that spot right there, and we'll start collecting tokens. I'll probably get around, uh, I don't know, 1,500 to 2,000 tokens, and then start killing Cyclops. All right, there's a Rune Defender on the ground. Uh, really got that pretty quickly, actually. Um, as you can see here on the right, Cyclops killed uh, 299, just under 300. Uh, so pretty good. These are at a rate of 1 in 50. Uh, there are 7 total, so... Yeah, if you do the math there, um, I should have had to kill at least 50 more, 51 more. So under drop rate, very nice. Uh, let's see if that translates to the bottom floor. <laughs> I'll probably uh, I'll probably end up going incredibly dry on the Dragon Defender. Uh, we'll see, hopefully not. Uh, we'll throw this on. Uh, we'll drop this on the ground. We'll take a look at what the total stats are for this. 
Uh, I know the Rune Defender's pretty pretty damn good. Yeah, plus 5 melee strength. And uh, we're using a Slash weapon, so plus 19 to our accuracy. Uh, as long as, as well as uh, some defensive stats. Cool. So, let's go uh, go to the bottom floor and attempt to get our dragon. So I've been killing the uh, higher level Cyclops for a Dragon Defender and happen to get an Adamant Square Shield, which is kind of hard to come by. Uh, it isn't dropped by a lot of sources. I think it's dropped by the high level Cyclops, obviously, in the Warriors Guild, but also Worms, which you need a Slayer level of like 62 to kill. So um, we're going to take advantage of having our medium stashes built because this is a medium clue scroll item. This along with the Mithril Plate Body and a Bone Dagger, which is why I'm here. Um, get stored somewhere in Catherby, and also while I'm in the area, I happen to get two long bones uh, from the Rune Defender grind that I'm just going to cash in here for some construction experience. And here we are in Barlock's house. Uh, you can see where we are on the map, uh, just south of the bank, kind of, uh, kind of in the middle on the western side of uh, of Dorgish Khan. Uh, you can come to his house and you can trade in your long bones and your curved bones for some free construction experience. So uh, we're going to do that. Oh, he'll also give me 2,000 per bone. That's kind of nice. Uh, so I'll say yes. And we got 9,000 just from two bones. That's pretty damn good. That adds up um, across the lifespan of an account. So definitely well worth doing. I'm taking a brief break from uh, the Defender Grind to go ahead and get the... Uh, Easy diary for the Candor and area completed. Uh, that does it right there. Uh, this is just because right now I need a light source. I'm kind of clearing my inventory, and I'm tired of getting my. I'm tired of buying a candle, pretty much. And here's the reward from it. Uh, so we get a we get an experience lamp, giving 2,500 experience, and any skill above 30. We'll obviously use that on Herblore, and uh, that gets us 37. Agility mixes, useless, but the most important thing that we got from this is the Kandarin Headgear 1, and this will act as a light source. Uh, it's not extinguishable. I can reclaim it from uh, Purdue shop at several different lo locations around Gilinor. Uh, it'll just be the easiest uh, light source acquirable on the account for the rest of the account, pretty much. Um, unless I get, like, the fire-making cape, I think. But, uh, yeah, this is going to be pretty crucial moving forward. Um, right now I'm just kind of uh, clearing my inventory a little bit. Uh, I gathered some pineapples from Brim, from one of the charter ships in Brimhaven and noted them at the uh, Leprechaun there. And I'm just kind of going around making super compost at all of the compost bins. Uh, I did get a Ranar seed as you can see in the inventory. Uh, I do plan on planting that at the only patch that doesn't die. Uh, but I want to wait until I have the super compost to plant it because it will um, it'll just guarantee more yield, and that will be just um, kind of kind of a method of storing prayer potions. Uh, so I'll keep the Ranar plant there, and then whenever I need them for any quests that I'm doing or any kind of difficult content, I can go pick a couple Ranars, uh, two to three of them, uh, go gather some snake grass and make some prayer potions. Um, so that's the mindset there. Uh, we have. A little bit more tokens. We may have to grind out a little more of the reanimated armor to get our Dragon Defender. Uh, I'll show you our progress for that. We're currently at 401 Cyclops killed, uh, which means that we've killed exactly 100 of the higher level Cyclops, uh, putting us at exactly the drop rate for the Dragon Defender. And as predicted, we are going dry. We're just kind of paying for <laughs> getting our Rune Defender so quickly. But... Um, yeah, with that, we'll go turn this long bone in. We will finish up uh, putting the pineapples in the compost bins and head back to the Warriors Guild. I went ahead and made the decision to invest in 200 soul runes in order to change one of the portals in my portal chamber. Uh, I'm going to get rid of the mind altar portal just because there is a minigame teleport available for um, Last Man Standing. I also carry a Ring of Dueling on me at pretty much all times, so if I need to bag something, I can just teleport there and safely do so, making the Mind Altar portal pretty useless. So I'm going to go ahead and get rid of it. I believe that's position number one of three. Let's take a look. Yep, it is position number one. So we'll go ahead and select the Mind Altar, and we're going to replace that with um, the Salve Graveyard. 
And that does it. That's going to be our next, uh, or it's going to be our closest teleport to a fairy ring from now on. Uh, we'll go ahead and use it. As you can see, it takes us here to the ghouls. This is originally why I was kind of hesitant on doing it, is because when I, init when I initially made my portal chambers, I was a pretty low level. Uh, so if I were to teleport here and just leave myself in the middle of those ghouls, I could have easily been killed. And if I was AFK for long enough, um, it could potentially wipe the account. But now that I'm pretty chonky, I've got quite a bit of defense levels and combat levels compared to then. I am. I feel relatively safe having that as a portal. I just have to kind of remember to um, stay on my toes every time I use it. But as you can see, it teleported just here, and it's just a very short run to the fairy rings here. So, really nice quality of life update. It's going to be great uh, for clue scrolls and just really everything in the future. So, let's get back to the Warriors Guild and hopefully get that Dragon Defender uh, status update. On that is we're at 435 kill count. Uh, bringing our kills, our uh, higher level Cyclops kills up to 134. Hey, there it is, Dragon Defender. This took a little while to get. Uh, not too worried about that. The grind was pretty easy, pretty nice. Um, offered a lot of good Alks. I'll show you the loot total from the Cyclops that we killed. Uh, 535. Uh, just about 300 of those being uh, the upper level the lower level uh, Cyclops. So we killed, what was it? We killed 236 of the, um, of these Cyclops here for the Dragon Defender, which is just over twice the drop rate. So um, I think that's our first thing we went dry on. Really not a bad place to go dry though, because if you look, we got quite a bit of loot, a lot of good Alkables, um, 552K um, by Grand Exchange value. Uh, realistically, we probably got about um, 300k cash, maybe a little less. Um, some of which we spent on our new portal in our house to take us to a closer fairy ring to the South Graveyard. Um, but yeah, Dragon Defender, it's quite, it's kind of a small upgrade over the uh, the rune, just one plus one uh, melee strength, but it does offer um, plus five accuracy and defensive stats. So. Overall, very, very nice. We'll go ahead and drop the Rune Defender. This is no longer needed. Uh, let me make sure. I don't think I can Alk it. Um, no, can't Alk it. So we'll drop it. Yes, I'm sure. And here are the overall stats of the Dragon Defender. Plus six uh, melee strength. Nice. And mid-20s for our uh, accuracy bonus and defensive bonuses. Very, very nice. This will be in our offhand pretty much all the time now. So... Uh, and it's still, I'm pretty, didn't they update this to be like more red, but it still looks pink? Yeah, okay. Weird. But, um, next I guess we're going to clear our inventory and kind of shift gears onto something else. We're going to get rid of this, uh, mithril armor. We don't need it anymore to get tokens. Um, we don't need our tokens anymore. Uh, get rid of these potions, heal up. And then we have a limpert seed to plant and another Ranar Seed. What I'm thinking is, since I only have one patch that is, or one herb patch, I should say, uh, that is guarantee protected, uh, that being the one just outside our house in um, Hosidius, we are probably just gonna commit one of our uh, bag spaces to uh, clean Ranars. So we'll go ahead and harvest this Ranar uh, we'll clean them and we'll note them at the leprechaun and store them in the bag and we'll just we'll just keep a stack on us because having prayer potions or the ability to make prayer potions um, having that ready readily available is just gonna be really nice for the future so yep uh, what we're doing next I'm not sure I'm probably just going to uh, keep questing but we'll see uh, this is actually where I am going to end the video, though. Um, pretty amazing accomplishment, getting the Dragon Defender. Uh, overall, uh, we progressed the account quite a bit, um, melee stat-wise, especially. Uh, and we also got a bunch of quests done. We're up to 103 quest points. Or, sorry, 103 completed quests with 192 quest points. Uh, here are the stats. That's what they're looking like. Uh, pretty good. 1,178 total level. And um, in the next episode, we're just going to 
continue on the path that we're on, doing as many quests as we can, and uh, just progressing the count in a positive way. Uh, thank you for sticking around to the end. I hope I see you in the next one.